All right, and we have polar coordinates. <laughs> Let's do some really fast review questions. I'm not going to go in how to do them because all the formulas you need are right there on the board. So our first, ooh, nice colors. Are you recording? Yes, I am recording. They gave me the rainbow colors. Nope, they're gone now. I don't know what's going on. It's here a second ago. His name is Microsoft. It's headquartered in Redmond, Washington. They need to fix their, their we color go. system. As like class, class field trip. Go <laughs> Dude, about All right, <laughs> find polar coordinates. They're always listening. <laughs> Especially when the record button is hit. <laughs> Lucky me. All right, so this is in rectangle, rectangular, so I'm going to write a little rec. Yeah. It's probably not a Z. <laughs> rec. That's a two. Or whichever you want. Wait, this looks like a polar coordinate. Let's find the rectangle coordinates. All right, so we got negative pi over 3. That is an easy angle right here. Go over 2. So there's the point P. All right, we're going to get x and y coordinates for this point P. We'll have some x and y. And x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta. Remember, polar coordinates have an order, radius first, theta second. It's alphabetic order, r before t. So x is 2 times cos negative pi over 3. y is 2 times sine negative pi over 3. So sine negative pi over 3 is negative 1. Nope. Negative square root of 3 over 2 which is negative square root 3, and x cosine negative pi over 3 is 1 half, so x is going to equal 1. So there's the rectangular coordinates for our polar point right there. So we'll do one uh, conversion the other direction. So our point is negative 4, negative 4. I'll do the easy part of graphing it. So I need a radius and a theta to describe that point that I just drew. You can choose. I'll draw the radius or the theta going either direction. I don't care which of those two angles you use. You can use a negative angle or a positive angle. Just make sure your theta is between negative 2 pi and 2 pi. Is that a 4 or a Y that you have there? Four. There are Y's at the top, 4's right below it. Oh, okay.
So the radius should be easy to compute. You just square negative 4, negative 4, add those together, square root. So 4 square root 2 would be the radius. And the more tricky part is the theta. I gave you the tangent is y over x. The only time that will absolutely not work is when x is 0. You would have undefined. And if x is 0, you have pi over 2 or negative pi over 2, depending on what side of the axis you're on. Unfortunately, tangent doesn't always give us, uh, inverse tangent doesn't always give us a right angle. If I did inverse tangent, I would go with pi over 4. However, that's not the angle I want. So you need to know something about these trig functions. So the reference angle would be pi over 4. That's what the inverse tangent would tell me. But you have to know we're not in quadrant 1. So the two angles to get here, you basically either add a pi or subtract a pi. 5 pi over 4 or negative 3 pi over 4 are the two angles that I want to use. So I don't want to go over all the details of how we get this. This was pretty much a good part of pre-calculus uh, 2 class, was getting all this. So how did um, the root 4, or I mean 4 squared plus 4 squared? So I factor, or I just wrote the 4 squared plus 4 squared is 2 4 squareds. Uh, and then just square rooted that guy. You could write it as whatever that comes out to. 3 32. Yeah, 4, 4, 16. Yeah, third square 32, if you're more into numbers. All right, let's graph some inequalities now. We graphed polar equations, which would be called equalities. And what we're going to do now is graph inequalities. So we'll pretend like they're equal, graph them out, and then figure out what part should we be shading. We'll do some pretty easy examples here. So our radius will be between 1 and 2. And theta will be between pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So let's first think about the radius between 1 and 2. So if r equals 1, so we'll go with the blue marker r equals 1, what type of graph is that equation going to have? The unit circle. Unit circle. So this will just be every point that has radius 1 or 1 away from the origin. So I'll go with I'll take two of these boxes to be 1. So that'll be my unit circle right there. So that's my small bound on the radius. Now let's go with the big bound, which is the 2. So r equals 2 is the bigger bound. And what type of graph is r equal 2? Every point, 2 away from the origin. So we're going to have not a unit circle, but a radius 2 circle. So my radius needs to be between 1 and 2. So it's OK to touch both of these curves or anywhere in between. So we call this an annulus, if I fill it in. So we're between these two curves. It's called an annulus. Or sorry, between two circles is called an annulus. They need to be concentric. Do they still have aerobies, the flying disc? It's not a flying disc, it's a flying annulus. Anybody knows that? 
the center's cut out. But that's one of the things shaped like this. There's lots of other things. All right. CDs, we don't even use those anymore. All right, so I could shade this in. I don't want you to shade this in because there's still another inequality I haven't paid attention to yet. But this is what the shading would look like. Concentric means that it's uh, around, centering the uh, like the center of the graph or something? The centers are the same, yeah. Okay. Or another way to think they're lined up nicely would probably be an easier way to describe it. All right, second part, let's do the angles all in purple. So here's our angle inequality. So we're between pi over 4 and less than 3 pi over 4. So let's pretend we're equal to pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4. So that will give us two lines. One of them is the pi over 4 line. The other one is the 3 pi over 4 line. They do go out further, but the only part of these that I really care about is the portion that's inside the annulus right here. So the actual region that we're describing is called pizza crust. It's not the real name for it, but I think you know what I mean if I say that. Any questions on our graph right there? So I intentionally chose easy inequalities. These look a little strange when they're graphed out. These are actually linear inequalities, meaning there's no squared, square roots. They're just r is between two numbers and theta is between two numbers. So this is what we call a polar rectangle. So there is graphing inequalities. Let's convert to polars and let's do an example where we convert a graph a rectangular equation and convert to polars. So what is one way to graph an equation? Plug and chug. Plug and chug, or clueless method. All right, let's pretend we're not clueless. And we actually know what this graph looks like. What type of an equation, or what type of graph would this equation have? Circle. Circle, what's the radius? Nine. Three. Three. And what's the center? Three. No. Center needs to be a point. Yeah, no, no. So zero, zero, three. three. So center 0, 3, radius 3. Go ahead and graph that out. It should be easy to graph. So we took care of the graphic part. That was pretty easy. Now let's convert to a polar 
Should I be expecting an equation or a point after I'm done converting? I start with an equation, so I better turn it into an equation. So if you start with a point, you better turn it into a point like we did earlier. So I'm starting with an equation, it needs to turn into an equation. How in the world do I convert this? Let's write down some stuff that you know, or some stuff I told you last class that you may have forgotten. So I've got to turn x's and y's into r's and thetas. What's the equation to go from x's into polars? x is r cos theta, and y is r sine theta. So if I use this for x, this for y, I will immediately no, have no more x's and y's. So x turns into r cos theta, y turns into r sine theta. So we are technically done at this step. We have converted right here. However, this is not the nicest equation ever. Uh, we can do some algebra to simplify this out. So I'm going to square both of these, r squared cos squared theta plus r squared sine squared minus 3r sine theta minus 3r sine theta minus 6r sine theta plus 9 equals 9. So first thing you notice, the 9's are going to cancel. I'll subtract 9 on both sides. What I just underlined, what is r squared cos squared plus r squared sine squared? It's almost 1. So it'll be r squared times 1, or just r squared. So that's, if I factor an r squared out, I'll be left with 1. So I'm going to skip that step and just write r squared times 1. And from here, I can divide everything by r multiplied by 1 over r. So here's a simpler polar equation at the bottom of the board. So either of these two are in polars. Nope. You can recover it all. You would just basically do the, op the steps in the opposite order. So if you started at the bottom, you would go, first thing you would do is, let's see, subtract 6 sine theta and then multiply by r. And then slowly go, you'd be going the other direction. So if I started at the bottom, so <clears throat> if the question was turn this into a rectangular equation, the first thing I would do is multiply both sides by r. And on the left side, you have x squared plus y squared. On the right side, r sine theta is y. So I would do that, and then 
you could go complete the square on the y's to get back to wherever we started, somewhere up there. You have to complete the square on the y's to get that. So we're going to convert to a Cartesian equation, and one we're going to start with. All right, we'll take one that's almost exactly the same. R equals four cos theta. Whoa, convert to, yeah, Cartesian equation, okay. So I'll give you one minute to do this one. It should be pretty quick. Your first steps multiply both sides by R. When you complete the square questions or other algebra questions. How did, just how did uh, r squared become this y squared? That's at the very top. We got these. Oh, I totally forgot to write one of them down. So add x squared plus y squared equals r squared. That's pretty important to be left off the list. four equations, and apparently we only use three of them. All right, so you can graph that. It's pretty easy. Center, 2, 0, radius, 2. Let's talk about symmetry next, and then we'll get into some calculus. So x-axis symmetry, if I have a point in the first quadrant, now I don't even want to think about Cartesian coordinates, only polars here. It should be pretty obvious where the reflected point will be that has x-axis symmetry. What are the new polar coordinates for that point? So same r, except now we're going to rotate theta the wrong way. So this one will be r negative theta. So if one point is r theta, you would also get r negative theta. So the way we're going to test, you're going to swap theta with negative theta. That's our test. So y-axis symmetry, easy to draw. Does the radius change for y-axis symmetry? Nope, I can use the same radius. Angle, though, is going to be tricky. Anybody remember the angle or wants to take a good guess? So it's going to be pi minus theta. One way to see it, there's theta. We don't usually measure angles like that, but you could draw that angle theta. What I want is what's left over. Uh, so I want this angle, if I write it as phi, I should get phi plus phi pi equals theta. Hold on. P 
phi plus theta equals pi. So phi equals pi minus theta. So our test is we're going to replace theta with pi minus theta. It's only one more symmetry to go, and that's origin. So origin means the mirror image across the origin. You can also think of it as a half rotation or a pi rotation, either direction. That is one way to get this point. So one way to think about this point is theta plus pi. So that'll get us over there. So I could write this as r comma theta plus pi. What if I wanted to use the angle theta, what could I use instead of r? What can I use instead of r? Negative r. Negative r. <laughs> I was like, asleep. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome to back to the land of the living. We covered a lot. We were doomed. I was in the no so phase. Pi plus theta is one option, or there's two ways to test. <laughs> or I can replace r with a negative r. So there's two tests for origin that you could run. So that takes care of symmetry right there. So now we're going to start some calculus. So this is all geometry. And it touch algebra. Now we're going to do calculus. So if we think of slope as dy over dx, or the amount of rise divided by the amount of run. Unfortunately, this is not r prime. Well, first of all, r prime of what variable? Theta and r. The, so this is not equal to r prime of theta. So let's figure out what exactly can this be. So what is r prime of theta? It would be d theta. Nope, dr over d theta. All right, so these are not the same thing. So we're going to use x equals r cos theta and y equals r sine theta. So there's two ways to take these derivatives. You can either apply the operator to little d, which means uh, this is just like a u sub right here. So if I apply this little uh, derivative operator without specifying what variable I'm taking derivative with respect to. Then I would get dx equals, I have a product rule on the right side, so it's r prime cos theta dr plus r times negative sine theta d theta. Now it's a little bit tricky. Actually, let me write this in a slightly different order. What I did on the right side, there's basically two, there's a product. So there's two pieces. There's a derivative of r, which is right there. And then the other, the other side is a derivative of cos theta. Whenever you apply the 
just the operator d, you always get a d, whatever variable you're, uh, you're taking deriv derivative of at that uh, moment. So this is r prime cos theta dr minus r sine theta d theta. That's dx right there. So that's one way to take these derivatives. Let's do it a slightly different way that you may enjoy a little more. So let's not think about it in this way. Uh, so we're going to suppose now r is a function of theta. That means I can write r as f of theta for some function f. So uh, x equals r, of the, r cos theta, which is f theta times cos theta. And y is r sine theta, which is now f theta sine theta. Now this only works if r is a function of theta. So if r is a function of theta, you can uh, go this route, which I think every problem I give you, r will be written as a function of theta. So all the problems I give you will work for this, uh, what we're doing here specifically. I didn't make any assumptions earlier, uh, but those are a little more tricky, so we're going to stick to these easier ones here. What derivative does it make sense to take with what variable? Either x or theta. Theta. Let's go with theta. So I'm going to take a d d theta this time. Not just a derivative, but a derivative with respect to theta. So you have a little more experience applying those operators. All right. What is? How do I write the left side? D x d theta. D x d theta. So there's really not much more thinking. The right side definitely have product rule. So go ahead, apply that product rule here. And when you're done with this derivative, do the exact same thing, get a theta derivative of the y equation. Yeah, why is there a negative sign there? Oh, just so this uh, derivative of plus like negative. Yep. So All right, so any questions on that? Second one's a little easier because derivative of sine is positive cosine, but they behave in a really similar way. And originally what we were looking for was dy over dx. So what I'm going to do is write this as dy d theta divided by dx d theta. This uses the chain rule if you want to think about it in calculus or if you treat the derivative like a fraction. I'm basically multiplying by 1 over d theta divided by 1 over d theta. So whichever of the two ways, it's probably easier to think about it algebraically. I'm multiplying by 1 over d theta divided by 1 over d theta. And now I have nice formulas for both of these. They're written right here on the board. So I'm just going to write in dy d theta on the numerator.
There we go. So our derivative got a whole lot uglier. That's just a fine slope of a polar curve. So what's the slope when dx over d theta equals 0? So what that tells us is we're not moving left and right at all. So let's think of a nice polar curve, a lot of them were circles. Where on this circle would dx over d theta equals 0? As you're spinning around the circle, there are some points where you're not moving in the x direction. There we go, far left and far right. Depending on what direction you're spinning around the circle, either way, you're going to be on, your derivative will exist either on that line or the other line, no matter which way you're spinning around in the circle. If you're going the standard clockwise, uh, counterclockwise direction, your derivative will point directly upwards. And if you're spinning uh, in the same direction on the other side, you'll be going, your velocity will be going directly downward. Counterclockwise or clockwise? Counter. That would be for a spin that direction, which would be the standard orientation for the circle. So before we called those slopes undefined, now we know undefined generally means directly up, directly down, or you're actually not moving at that moment, meaning your derivative will be zero. So we'll try to use paths that, are, that don't have any stationary points so we don't have this issue. So a path we'll use, we'll try to make sure that they all have uh, a positive velocity, or positive speed, I should say. All right, so normally we would say undefined, or I should say before, we would call this undefined. Now, this is going to be hors uh, a vertical, either up or down. So we are going to intentionally use the clueless method to graph this next example, but we're not going to be completely clueless. We're going to find symmetry first, and hopefully that will let us uh, plug in less values and then use symmetry to build up the rest of the graph. So I don't have to go 0 to 2 pi and plug in every theta value that I know of. All right, I showed you how to check symmetry. There's three tests we're going to run. So let's check symmetry first. We'll go x-axis, so we'll replace theta by negative theta. Is cosine, so we got 1 minus cos of negative theta. Is cosine even function or odd function? Even. Even, so cosine doesn't care about the negative on the theta. So this is the same as 1 minus cos theta. Cosine is even property there. So this is the original, so we pass the x axis test. What do you mean cosine is even? Uh, that means cos negative theta equals cos regular theta. Whereas odd means you could bring that negative sign through. Like sine is, is odd, so that negative sign.
So symmetries, another thing I told you about symmetries, you can't have two. You either have one symmetry, no symmetries, one symmetry, or all three. So if I make one more test, and, I fi and I, if I pass another test, then I have all three automatically. If I fail another test, I can only have one. So we're going to do one more test. The next easiest axis is the uh, y-axis, so let's go with that. It's not necessarily easy to remember, but you have a cheat sheet. So we're going to swap theta with pi minus theta. How in the world do we deal with uh, cosine of pi minus theta? Um, uh, some difference rule. Some difference rule for cosine. So in case you weren't in my pre-calculus class this morning, I'll write down the cosine difference rule. <laughs> So cos A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So there's our difference formula. So A is pi, B is theta. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Sine of pi is 0. What is sine pi? Sine pi is 0. So the whole term disappears. All right, this is not what we started with. Basically, the minus turned into a plus. So it's not the original equation right there. So that implies we failed our symmetry check. So y-axis is out. So by default, origin has to not work as well. That's because you can't have two symmetries. OK, so we have x-axis symmetry only. So let's think about x-axis, whatever happens below the x-axis, if I graphed everything below the x-axis or above, either way, I could just reflect it over. So let's just let's keep it easy and go everything above the x-axis, and then we're going to use reflection and flip it over. So we're going to graph for thetas in quadrant 1 and 2, so that's 0 to pi. And then we're going to use symmetry after that. So all we have time to do now is just draw our table. We'll fill it in tomorrow. So we got theta in the first column. No, no, no. Not tomorrow. Oh, we'll do this the next day we have class. And then we'll have cos theta, and then 1 minus cos theta. And we're going to go 0 to pi. So we'll fill this chart in next class.